Have you ever heard of a library called Marco? What about Preact? Today we're going to talk about five JavaScript frameworks you probably never heard of. If you stay all the way to the end, I have a special sixth one, so stay tuned. And before we begin, let me just remind you that Udemy is having a $10 sale. I went ahead and put the links below on some of my favorite courses. You can click on them. I do get a couple bucks if you go ahead and buy a course through it. Just uh, that really helps me out. Thanks. All right, here is the five JavaScript frameworks and or libraries that you may not have heard of. This is in no particular order. So let's take a look at it. And the reason I kind of bring this up before we get started, because I always think it's a good idea to, get, to kind of really know and understand that there's other things out there other than Angular or React or Ember or Vue. So there is other development going on. You don't necessarily need to become an expert on all these, but it's good to know that they exist. And one caveat, I am not an expert in all these. I've tried some of them out, but not all of them. So I'll let you know what I think about each one. So first is Glimmer.js. I have used this quite a few times. If you don't know, I have a tutorial on it, which uh, you can find here. So it's a small, light, and fast UI component library for the web is one of the taglines it has. So it's built from the same people who brought you Ember.js. So you have that amazing build tool with Ember CLI, has the great build pipeline. You can easily create your apps for development and production. You can make it as a component so you can put it into other web pages or you can be its own standalone app, which is really nice. It's built with TypeScript support out of the box. If you use VS Code, it works great. I've used it a few times with, um, even I have a Vim plugin for TypeScript and that worked really well with it. And it's fairly small size, 33 KB. So you can see that that it's, it's not too big. One nice thing about this Glimmer components, eventually it will come to Ember.js as another way to create components. It's not quite there, yer, there yet. But in the meantime, you can use it. You can create really small standalone applications, which is awesome. Or like I said, like web components, you can put in other places. The next framework or library I want to talk about is called Marco. And really what makes this interesting is it's by the people uh, by from eBay. So it's very minimalistic. It also uses single file components, kind of like what we have with Vue.js. So that means you're going to have your like the component information in there, your CSS information, they're gonna be separated and all in one file. So the logic is gonna be in there too. It's uh, it's a definitely has server side rendering. It's also has, it's very small, it's 10 KB gzip together. It's a very fast and light library. It's a single page application. Uh, it has some of the reactive UI components that you see in in Vue.js and, and other places. So you're gonna have a lot of one-way binding between elements. And like I said, it's used by Eme. So I really like this Marco. I just kind of got a, a glimpse of it the other day. People were comparing it to Vue.js and it seems interesting. Mithril.js, it's been, and it's, by the way, some of these frameworks and libraries have been out for a while, um, but they're not really well known, I don't think. So it, this is another one has a really small size, less than 8KB. I think it's one of the, maybe the smallest JavaScript library used for single page applications. So it's a fast, small framework, includes routing and XHR right out of the box. So you get a lot of stuff for a very small size. And it seems, to, I've seen some people really like it. I haven't used it myself, but it seems really interesting. The next one is Preact. I've heard this quite a bit. Some people that, uh, it's kind of like a React alternative. It does a lot of stuff that React has, but they've cut some stuff out. It's really small size. I think I saw it as small as 3KB gzipped. Um, you can use your ES2015 API, but it also includes some of the things that you may love out of React, like the JSX. Of course, it uses the virtual DOM. Almost all these frameworks use the virtual DOM in some, some way. You can use even React Dev Tools. You can do single uh, server side rendering too on it. So yeah, fast three B. As you can say from right from the the logo here, fast three kilobyte alternative to React with same ES6 API. So this is kind of like if you like React but you don't like how bloated or big it is, then you can try Preact out. Um, well, once again, I haven't tried this out, but I I've heard good things. The fourth 
The fourth one we are looking at, it's a library, is Riot.js. It's component-based UI library, so kind of think of it similar to our Glimmer that we had before. It has custom tags, um, so we're not using JSX or anything. It has these custom tags, human readable. They, they call it an elegant API, and it's once again really small, gzip, about 10K gzipped, which is awesome. And so if I had to pick a winner between these five, I really think it's a tie between Glimmer.js and, and Marco, just because I, you know these ones, Glimmer has a lot of potential behind it. It's really new, but like I said, it's by the guys that created Ember. So I have good feeling that this is going to be one of those UI libraries that gets some momentum behind it. And I'm, they're already thinking about how to integrate it into a normal Ember.js app. But like I said, it can be standalone. And they're thinking about routers and everything else that can go with it. And Marco, since it has eBay's backing, and I've heard a lot of good things about it when compared to Vue.js, and it seems to be working really well. So I do have one more framework slash library that is a runner up. So what do you think it is? Let me know. <laughs> what do you think it could be? Well, let's see. Elm. Yep. So you may have heard of Elm. I'm not sure if you have. Sometimes people talk about it in, in the same thoughts when they talk about PhoenixJS because it's a functional language. And But it's not, it's not JavaScript. What, what it is, they consider themselves a language, and their tagline is a delightful language for reliable web apps. And it's supposed to be generate JavaScript with great performance and no runtime exceptions. So it's it's a functional language that compiles down to JavaScript that you can use, but you can it, it's pretty powerful and fast. I haven't had that the chance to use it, but I've seen some tutorials of people that can like I said before using it with something like Phoenix, which is based off Elixir, which is another functional language, and just having a, a really great web app experience. I don't know if this is this is something that I would keep an eye out on, but it's not uh, something that I I don't think it's going to be huge, but it's it's out there and it's worth looking into. So thank you for watching this video. Thank you for checking out these all these different types of frameworks and libraries, and and in this case a language. Uh, I definitely have been trying out a few of these, and I enjoy them. If uh, if you like these type of videos, uh, I suggest first below, go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know what you think I missed here. What are your favorite JavaScript frameworks and libraries? Um, mostly single page application stuff is kind of what I'm mentioning here that I missed in this video. If you have someone, let me know below. Also, if you can click that subscribe button, that really helps me out. And then click that bell button. You can punch that bell button. That's what people say, right? You can punch the bell button and you can get subscribed. And thank you so much for watching. Take care.